Salutations, everyone. Welcome back to Total War Pharaoh. I'm Lord Foreman, and today we've got a guide on Sauret, the female character, at least so far, of Total War Pharaoh, uh, wife of Seti. She's an economic genius, and for once, her title actually lives up to her playstyle. So we're going to be going through multiple sec sections of her strengths and weaknesses, starting moves, etc. I'm going to timestamp those below so you can jump to whichever one you'd like to see. And if you, this video does help you, please do like, subscribe, comment, tell me what you like, tell me what you didn't like, put down your own strategies. Go nuts. Anyway, let's jump right into it. So Sauret arguably has probably the best economy in the game. She has a really good starting location, but let's go through her strengths and weaknesses as the game provides them. It's not entirely accurate. So the most important thing I would say for Sauret to know is her faction buildings. Unlike most faction build factions, you can build production buildings in minor settlements. If you stick three in a province, you gain a bonus to resources. This doesn't sound huge, but is probably why she has the best economy in the game. At least so long as you're not in complete collapse. But that's because of other factions, not her. Um, so basically, these are just the standard production stuff, but it's the th combo of three, and we'll go over that later. Um, in terms of her unit, she has the best chariots. Uh, you have javelin chariots, which are quite useful for harassment. Um, you also have bowmen with weapons. Uh, they're still not as good as melee units, but you can justifiably have a few more ranged units than other factions, but you lack the ridiculous uh, range strength of some of like, the Nubian and Kushite units. Now, in terms of her commands, she can click um, on her command and get a full province. So everything, all, f all the settlements in the region will give you uh, their per turn production immediately. This can be very useful if you're running short on a resource, but by and large, you probably don't want to use it. Instead, wait to Shemsu Hor, where you can instantly construct some buildings for no cost. You can build really tall, really fast as this faction, and you have access to virtually every resource in the game from like turn five. So pretty powerful in terms of building up. Now in court, she plays kind of differently. I think she's one of the weaker um, court management people, which is odd because she's the strategist. Um, she can, if she finds somebody's plotting against her, she can pay to flip it against them uh, and basically reverse the plot against them. The reality is, unless they're trying to like discredit you, it's better usually not to flip the intrigue, but we'll go over that later when I talk about the court more. Uh, she worships it, worships Isis, which is actually one of the better gods to worship. Uh, happiness, workforce growth, really nice. If you do prayer, you'll reduce enemy happiness, which can be useful because she doesn't lack the super powerful armies of someone like Ramses or Amon Mese or some of the Canaanite or uh, Hittite factions. So anything that can reduce the enemy's morale is quite useful for her. Everything else is pretty standard for her in general. It says to use chariots. It also says you may want to go with Hashepsut the Merchant. We'll go over that later. I don't think that's the best one for her. And overall, she's a really good faction. Um, she's definitely a fun one to play. But she does have her weaknesses. The biggest weakness is probably she has lower happiness because of her faction buildings. You can overcome that by doing buildings and edicts and stuff, or commandments and stuff. And overall, her troops lack the high damage. So just be aware that you may have to rely on numbers to overcome enemies rather than quality troops. Now, you're not to the level of Seti, who just basically has vast armies of dirt cheap units. Hers are a little more expensive, but since her economy can support strong armies, she can go toe to toe with almost anybody. Except maybe Ramesses with his elites, but that's a different matter. So in terms of her starting position and opening moves. So she starts pretty much in the heart of Lower Egypt here. She's not down into some of the Nubian Kushite lands, but she's not up north in the Delta, which 
surprisingly puts her, I think, in one of the best starting positions in the game. You're unlikely to be invaded by the actual sea people. You'll be invaded by desert tribes, but they're usually a little bit more manageable than sea people. You have access to two food production provinces and access to easily expand along the Nile where you get more food. You're not crushed at the north with Ramesses, Seti, and uh, Renepta, and you're not in the south where everyone hates you like Amun Mese. Overall, you've got a great starting location. Might be my favorite one. Um, yeah, probably one of my favorite starting locations, if I had to say. So there's a couple things you want to do pretty early on for her that will make a difference in how she is played. So let's start with one of the easiest ones and then we'll get into actual moves. First thing is to realize she has an acquired trait at the beginning of the game. She gets more resources from ransoming people. So this actually is a very good strategy to support her economy, uh, although she doesn't really need to. Um, ransom people sometimes better than like conscripting them into your army. Uh, it will get you more resources. It's not amazing, but it will help a little bit. So just be aware that exists. So your capital down here, Yebu, is pretty well developed, already has a production building. So you will be generating plenty of food. Now, the thing to be aware of is your capital has more food production buildings. It could build, but they are currently blocked off since it's already developed. Now, you may consider, and it's entirely up to you, getting rid of some of these ones that you may not need. Um, or upgrading and when to upgrade building the food. Overall, you can make her capital generate more food than pretty much any other province in the game. She does start with a minor settlement that also can get food. So you're going to want to upgrade it. I would recommend reclaimed farmland for the workforce growth over fishing port. It's actually about the same amount of food, slightly less resources, more wood, but you can afford it. You want to be able to build up this land. So you have your starting army. Um, in your capital here, and it is worth pointing out you have the Colossi of Menon. Menonon? Menon? I have no idea how to say it. Uh, it's a statue of Amotep, Amen, Amenhotep the uh, Third. It's kind of cool. Uh, it does give you a nice bonus at the beginning of the game. If you send your army to it, you will get morale. Well, let's just speed that up. Now, the downside here is if you do what I just did, um, actually, I don't think it actually registered. You can't fight the first battle, so don't do that. But if you're defending, make sure that it, you have that and you know it exists. It will help you overcome larger armies. Now, obviously, let's go back to where we were. Pretend we were back here. You would ta fight this first battle, defeat this army. You may want to ransom it. I recommend getting the replenishment, which is usually the better start. Do not invade uh, Hetem over here with the other army. Uh, combined, the garrison combined with the actual starting army there is going to be able to beat you. So you're going to want to rebuild your army and build it up more. I recommend conscripted axemen. They're better than the clubmen and they're probably better than your slingers and archers. Uh, axemen are good against shields. Most Egyptian units have shields. Most Egyptian armies have shields as well. Um, and those who don't tend to have shields anyway, if they're not Egyptian. So, uh, basically axemen are the superior unit, especially early game. Um, you're going to want to build some range units, but you're going to want to upgrade your, um, oops. you're going to want to upgrade your barracks first to get to slightly better ones as you get higher up uh level four where she gets these renowned archers and stuff and chariots interesting enough her chariots can be done through the native recruitment center which is nice uh she really starts to shine in terms of military so once you beat this guy build build some troops recommend the axemen wait a turn maybe two invade hetem take it out you're gonna want to start developing it it has a stone quarry it is uh, extremely worthwhile to potentially throw down another stone production building there. Um, I forget what it's called, but it adds like 10% more stone. Um, you want to get as much stone out of this area as you can. This, of course, has 20,000, but uh, more stone, the better for upgrading. Then you're going to want to build up and take mess. It's really easy, in my experience, to take out this area. You'll simply march in, take it. You'll gain control of the Valley of the Kings, which has a similar effect to your starting monument. 
and more importantly, you'll gain some more legitimacy. Uh, it's very viable for Sauret to become Pharaoh in the first Legitimacy War because she can rapidly expand into areas that have monument and boost her Legitimacy that way. Um, it's quite fun to do so, actually. She's one of the few characters I would feel totally safe joining the Civil War near the beginning. Now, once you've taken Mess, the question becomes, where do you go? So let's just go over where you are. Amon Messe is down here. He's not going to appear for 20 to 30 turns, probably. To the north, Seti is going to go south. In my experience, Seti goes south and tends to take this area. Renepta will hold this area pretty stable for the time being. Ramesses is not a threat at this point of the game. In fact, I have yet to see Ramesses become a major threat in any of my campaigns. So, that's a thing. But otherwise, it's all miners around you, so you can pretty much rampage freely. If you're wanting to get to better units early on in terms of bronze, Shep's net over here is probably your best goal. I actually recommend taking out this faction over here, Karga, pretty early on. In my experience, these guys are like the rebels of Egypt. They constantly will break vassalage, alliances, start wars, and they will be aggressive. Like I've had them invade me as Ramesses when they declared war on me. Taking them out will secure you a uh, basically an oasis, which will give you some very needed uh, wood and food to build up your Nile provinces. Shepsnet over here will get you copper, and if you can get down uh, or over to Teba over here and get that gold, all the better. You might not be able to get Teba. I do recommend trying to grab these two. At that point, you will have access to all the resources in the game. Not at high levels, but you'll have access to it. So where do you go next? I recommend up here. Abju up here has another stone mine and those monuments. Now, be aware, when I have tested this in several campaigns, I tended to start my invasions from over here and take the stone mine. That may have been a mistake because I immediately got invaded along the coast. Um, you're pretty much going to be functioning with one army, maybe one army and a second with like four or five. So one full, one small one, just to hold this area. You're probably better off actually trying to ambush them on this road. And once you do, taking their capital and then finishing them off, just because it became a chase. <laughs> like they ended up down here when I finished off their armies. Once you've done that, the world is kind of your oyster. I recommend expanding further up, cementing your control of the west bank of the Nile, grab some of these food, stone, Work your way up. If you can get all the way up to here, um, by the time the Civil War starts, you're amazing. You probably won't, but it's still worth expanding up there for all the food. If you control the West Bank of the Nile here, you will have so much food. I had the ability to support three to four armies by like turn 50 or something in one of my games. It's very powerful. So that would be my recommendation. Seti is your ally, so you probably don't want to betray him at least for a long time. Um, you want to have more legitimacy, though, so you can crane the crown rather than Seti. Um, it's going to take some time to do so, but you should be able to beat him in terms of legitimacy without too much issue. Okay, let's talk about royal decrees now. So if you've seen some of my other videos, you may already kind of know the path I'm going to recommend, but for those of you who haven't, I'll go over it here. You want to start with longer festivals. Happiness in Capital Province is almost unbeatable for a starting three techs here. Then you're probably going to want to stag, snag food. It's your choice if you want to get the stone next or you want to get relations. I find I like the relations followed up by more food, followed up by better relations with the Egyptians. Pretty much stops any early game wars being declared on me. I tend to be the one to declare wars in Egypt which is nice. The downside is you get offered lots of non-aggression packs. Uh, just make sure you don't pick non-aggression packs with factions you're about to invade. Uh, otherwise, you'll lose diplomatic reputation and it'll make it a lot harder to get relations with other factions. The reason you want to do this is if you're going to make the play for the throne in the first civil war, become pharaoh, Having the relations, as soon as you declare for the throne, you want to start looking for factions to become your vassal. 
I was able to get like four or five on the first two turns. It was amazing. I controlled like half of Egypt on like turn 50 or something, along with lots of conquest. It was really powerful. Now, to be fair, that wasn't at a high level difficulty because I was still learning the faction, but it was quite fun. Now, where do you go after you've gotten relations? Well, if you haven't grabbed the stone, since you have stone mines and you'll get several, you can have three to four stone mines early on. You may want to snag Gift of the Gods for a little additional gold. Uh, it will help in terms of making your gold mines more productive. And since you have gold mines, why not snag it, really? You may find, however, you need... I hate this scroll bar. Uh, you may find that you need some wood. Uh, a lot of the farming buildings on the Nile require large amounts of wood. If you snag that oasis, I recommend it in starting moves. You will have a larger supply of wood. Uh, as well as upgrade the wood ports in your capital areas. That will help as well. Snag the dedication. Um, stick it on your leader. Uh, Zauret does pretty well with the Isis bonuses. Then work your way... Uh, well, actually, sorry. S yeah. Get another god. I recommend Ta. Pata, or however you want to say it. Um, and if you can do a dedication of your general, do your Zauret on probably Isis. It's... I think one of the better dedications. Grab influence as you expand. If you want to keep going west, um, except instead of going along the Nile, out here you're going to be running into different cultural influences, at which point this tech will help a bit. Um, you're going to stop to work at it, but one influence is nothing to scoff at. Now, after you've gotten the god dedication slot, you could get some military, but I actually re recommend taking a detour to grab some bronze orientation, and more importantly, the Nile Ever Giving. Since you're allied with Seti, and you'll probably be allied with Seti for a good chunk of the game, uh, plus 15 food is 15% more food. Why not? Uh, afterwards, probably snagging again some more bronze. Bronze is the only thing you might be lacking in a bit. Um, which everybody's kind of lacking in bronze, to be honest. Um, getting more brawn gets you better units. Getting the XP per turn is great. Getting more stone, even better. Working your way up to XP from battles. Workforce growth per owned cult center, faction-wide. Um, that will help develop the Nile provinces. Zauret can make a really good play for keeping civilization level high. Um, because you'll have access to several cult centers and the resources to develop them. I managed to prevent uh, civilization from sliding into crisis at all, and I managed to pull it back to prosperity um, pretty quickly once I had stabilized it and vassalized most of the factions. It was just a matter of crushing the sea people and the land invaders when I got the chance. Workforce cost, again, better for building up, as well as happiness for temples. You should be throwing down... Um, pretty much a temple in every capital area just to boost your favor with the gods. And if you want, you can grab prayer duration as well as defense and morale. If you get to rank 9 infantry, which can be hard, if you're going to do that, you're going to need XP from battles. Then other than that, work your way out. Just be aware that some of these uh, stuff over here for upkeeps requires higher tier units than what you start with. You'll have to get to tier 3, 4, and 5 but they're all good. Other than that, if you want to, getting the prayers for happiness as well as rating income, upkeep, and construction costs. Income from all sources is a good ending one here, but you've got to work your way over. So at, you'd better off getting construction costs, construction costs on everything, and then reload, am, reload speed, ammunition, and reload speed in general for your chariots. Remember, Zalrat has good chariots, so it can be worthwhile taking a detour there. So to recap, go through here, get the relations, get the food, maybe grab the stone, grab the gold, get some wood, dedication, bronze, more food, more stone, more bronze. Then pick if you want to get towards more ammunition, faster reloads, faster build up, cheaper construction, or you want to go to a faster build up in terms of reduced workforce cost and uh, happiness and a better army. I found I was better off building up because I vassalized a lot of people in all my campaigns, so I didn't need to go to war as often as I thought, and when I did, I tended to outnumber people. 
Uh, Amun Masse proved to be the hardest threat because his Kushite lands didn't like me, so I couldn't vassalize them. And he's pretty protected, so he builds up as well. So it became a titanic clash between someone who owned Central Egypt and someone who owned... Uh, I guess this is technically Upper Egypt, even though it's Southern Egypt, really. Um, the Nile's weird. Further up the Nile's upper, Lower Egypt is at the mouth, even though it's in the north. It's kind of confusing. So anyway, that's what you should look for in terms of royal decrees. The fact that you get some free building stuff is really useful. Um, it will save you plenty of resources. So you don't necessarily need to rush the construction decrees. It's up to you how fast you want to build up. Oh. So let's go over the various building. And this is mainly to just cover how Zaurette's production buildings work. So you can build a series of production buildings here. They're literally called production. Be aware, production is not the same as resources, even though it's buildings dedicated to resource production. Little weird that way. These are buildings modifying production. Really, I wish they had picked a better name. Anyhow, you can build them. They will cost you happiness. One, two, and two. But they will give you a huge benefit. So if you throw down a food one, and I definitely recommend you do in this you already start with one if you get a second one it will do even better um you do have to upgrade the settlement but if you go all the way to the top plus 30 is in the province not just the individual settlement so if you combine that or you stick it in several of your settlements you can generate massive amounts of food it will also be cheaper for you to recruit units with food which is great because your early game armies rely on food and all other production in the area, the province will be boosted by 20%. So that is really strong. I recommend trying to throw down both a gold and food. Don't bother with copper or sorry, bronze. You don't have any and don't really bother too much with the stone. You can uh, if you want some more, but really the gold and food will help you more early on. Later on, you may want to swap. But I would recommend throwing those out here in the desert where you don't have as much food. Really, seriously, it's easy to generate massive amounts of food from our capital settlement and the others you will take. I just love Zaurat's start. It's, it's everything you could want from a start, pretty much. Now, the other thing to point out is her military stuff. Let's jump into the building browser here. So, uh, we want to be on a major settlement. So, Zaurat does get these tax collector's offices. Um which everybody does, but it's worth pointing out on her, especially because she already has the other production buildings combined with this. You can, it will boost her production even higher. The downside is the reduction in happiness. Um, it can be worth going. You already start with the summer festival grounds, which is nice, but you're going to want to throw down a bazaar of the arts pretty early on to, to solve all the happiness problems you could want as well as building some outposts. Uh, the Zaurat outposts are really nice. Plus five happiness, throw down two of them. All your happiness problems are solved pretty much for the full game there. Build as many production buildings as you want. You'll have no trouble. Shrine of Isis is right up there with the top tier gods just because of the growth and the happiness. Combining the two is really strong. Might be too strong, honestly. Um, also, don't forget to throw down your economic outpost, one per region or region inside your province. Uh, boost your food outpost even higher. You can end up with some crazy multiples. Uh, hitting 80 is really easy as Zaurat. Getting over 100 takes a little work, but you can do it um, really strong. All of this combined is important once we move to the court and the legacy. So let's jump forward in time to one of my campaigns and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Okay, here we are on turn 15. I picked this one rather than a later one just so I could show you guys how this area turns descended into war pretty quickly. So I rapidly invaded this area here and I've been dealing with raiders and stuff. Um, I would finish them off. Uh, it would take another like five to six turns to hunt them down having to get over here to teba to take out their desert settlement and finish them off was annoying now these wars over here 
I didn't start them. They were all SETI, which means you've got to be aware of the potential for war before you're ready. Um, my other campaigns went nothing like this. SETI didn't get into this mess, um, but in this case he did. In terms of power for the crown, I'm not that far off um, getting being able to join the Civil War, which hasn't actually kicked off yet. It should kick off in a turn or two. I have gained more legitimacy by that point, and I become one of the leading candidates for Pharaoh. I rapidly grow, conquer people, make sure to throw on the right crown. Production of all resources is great, except for the reduction of replenishment. But you'd rather do that than reduction of relations, happiness, and production. So probably you're going to want the Nemes crown rather than the uh, Kepresh crown. In terms of legacies, the game recommends Hapshetsut the Merchant. Now, that's great. If we look at it here, I'm, I'm having some food troubles because I didn't build right. This was my first campaign. Um, later campaigns I did much better with. A shut suit is kind of cool. You pick resources, you stick them in an expedition, you send them out. In this case, I sent them to the Western Desert to get stone as well as some bronze because those are the only two things I really would love more of. The reality is I lost a lot of food trading there, so it wasn't a good option. I don't like Hashepsut the Merchant on Sauret. It's recommended. I really don't think it's what you want to take as her. I think you're going to want to go but most the Conqueror to help you take major cities. Um, can be very useful for a faction that doesn't have a dominating military. You just have more troops. But I think probably overall a better choice for you would be the Builder. So you build monuments and wonders. The reason is you start off pretty close to several of the building spots. I believe this is one. Um, and there's a couple up here which are very conquerable for um, Zauret. And you have the resources. You have access to stone early. So you can build up the 2,000 stone needed on the base. You have gold. So you can do the embellishments. And more importantly, you can do it quickly. Meaning you can gain legitimacy which will help you win the first Egyptian civil war. The downside is you have to hold off these people if they go to war with you. As you can see, this is what I was doing for my uh, decrees. We've only gotten a few turns into this. Um, maybe I'll show you another one later, but for now, you're probably going to want a different legacy than the merchant. Some people love the merchant. I know great tons of resources except for the fact that you have to keep sending them. Um, I would almost rather have consistent resources and the ability to conquer or gain legitimacy faster. Since you're really good at um, flipping plots at people, let's go talk about how you can manage the court and why becoming Pharaoh in the first war is a really good move for Zauret. So Zauret, you're going to want to start from the beginning discrediting people but if someone starts plotting against you which can only happen when you own a court position if you discover it you can flip it on them and hurt them that is a very strong power for the pharaoh because people have to pay resources to start plots against you they are wasting resources there you have a better chance of succeeding in your plots versus other people and they have a lower chance against you you can easily gain that power and just farm legitimacy uh, one of my campaigns, I had like 80 legitimacy, both from my own scheming, um, sorry, my own discrediting and other people's plots failing against me and other stuff and me reversing them. It's very quick and easy to do. Her ability should pop up here. And controlling the court, what position you take. I've done a video on all the court positions. If you haven't seen it, go watch that. But the reality is you want to pick something that gives you either gold or military. But you may not want to take a court position until the Civil War. Um, the reason being you can lose legitimacy from a court position, but it's really hard for someone to steal it from you when you're not in the court because they have no target. So going and getting a strong court position with legitimacy is great. Zauret lacks um, 
court actions. Like she's one of the lowest court action people. So it's very hard for her to dominate just through her own court actions. That's where her reversal um, intrigue action comes through. But I recommend going either for Viceroy of Kush for the, the more gold. More gold's always good. You get Kushite units, which are somewhat better ranged units than yours, even though she's known for ranged units. Early on, those are better. Plus, they give you access to just more units, um, as well as the gold. But a probably better one for her is First Commander, because then you gain access to elite units. I would push for this over Viceroy, mainly because you have access to both bronze and gold early on. Obviously, you need to get control of the bronze mines, but once you do, you can easily afford some high tier units really early on for a faction. This will give you access to some of those units, um, as well as cheaper recruitment costs combined with your food. You can recruit food units in your capital region at dirt cheap prices. It's hilarious. It's almost too strong. Our, or your other option is going for a vizier, so you get more actions. I wouldn't really push for the high priest unless you're going to build tons of temples and stuff. Um, you don't really need the extra gold from visiting Egyptian land temples. You can. It's nice. I would rather have the Viceroy passive. Treasurer, you gain resources and you have lower building costs, but you get the free building stuff from Zauret anyway. So you get in expert builders, which allow instant construction for free. It is really nice. The more region you own, the more uses you get. Free construction is not to be laughed at. Um, the factions that do get free construction tend to become, I think, the strongest ones as the game goes on. Um, the lack of having to spend resources means that you can use those resources on your military or for other reasons. Now, one thing I will point out before I end this video, because we're drawing towards an end, is you will be invaded from the west. Now, this doesn't look like much. It's mostly out of it. That's where you're going to get like Libyan invaders and stuff coming in. It's annoying. You may have to leave a single army or even two over here to prevent them. The problem is you really can't ignore the invaders. Um, they will get to the Nile and they will cause problems. So you're, even though you're in a great starting location, you're surrounded by potential opponents. So trying to eliminate as many as you can is good, as well as, and this bears special mention, don't forget that you can throw down, um, well, you can't actually throw down any there at the moment. Um, don't forget that you can throw down this extra production buildings everywhere, and you want to so you can support the armies. You seem to be, and this is a very odd problem for a faction to have, is you're lacking in the military buildings now i'm not entirely sure if this is intended or a bug but you have no garrison buildings available in some of your minor settlements which is a real problem you have to rely on troops rather than garrisons in some ways we've talked about low damage military that alone might be one of her biggest weaknesses because it does not dissuade invading forces from just going straight to your settlements. Unlike other factions where garrisons will slow them down, they're not going to be slowed down much here. You have to rely on manpower, plain and simple, and for that, you need lots of food. Build lots of food, support lots of dirt cheap armies, and just keep them out here while you have one, maybe two top-of-the-line armies conquering everything else. So, to conclude, let's just do a quick summary. Zauret, best resource producer in the game, probably. You're going to want to build production buildings, not the actual ones that give you resource, but the ones that multiply it everywhere in your lands. Three of them gives you the biggest benefit. It's not to say you can't build more. It's just the benefit is not as strong. And you may want to not go the recommended merchant as your legacy. The builder is really strong if you want to get and control the pharaoh position. It's easy to outpace people and just have massive amounts of legitimacy. If you're struggling with wars, the Conqueror will help. Most of the land along the Nile are cult centers in major cities, so that will help conquering and controlling them. You have access to lots of resources, though, so the building one might be better. Um, you could make an argument for um, going at 
Akhenaten, but you really don't need to. Your religion you start with, Isis, is already really strong. Um, you could double down on it, but you don't really need to. It's really close to your lands, but unlike other factions, you don't need an outpost here to start expanding from. You're literally right there. So, food, production buildings, gain control of the western desert, or just fight for the center of the Nile. Once you control this, you're probably going to be the richest and most powerful faction in the game anyway. Don't be afraid, though, to try and get peace with I these factions. They will not give peace right now because we pretty much just started the war. But as time goes on, they will want peace. You can peace them out. At which point, once you go for the throne, a lot of them are quite willing to become your vassals. Especially oops, especially if you've worked your way over here and you get the boosted relations as well as the boosted food. You will easily become the richest and strongest faction in the game. Keep improving your occult centers. Keep that p pillar of civilization high. It's very easy to gain five or six of them, which will keep the land from plunging into absolute collapse. Keep plenty of armies positioned. Having an army up here to guard off any advance down the Nile is very strong, as well as one in the south or two in the south to deal with any rebels and kill off Amon Messe. Leaving him alive is just asking for trouble as the game goes on. As you can see, he's already expanded out to here and we're only turned 15. He is very powerful. Anyway, that is the guide for Sauret. Hopefully this helps you. Uh, if it did, like, subscribe, comment. Let me know what you would rather have done or rather I said or anything you have questions on. And I hope to see you guys in another guide or let's play. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.